Hi, I'm Danny Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound, and today I'm going to answer the question, why a keytar? Well, if you're a keyboard player, you've probably noticed keytars in videos and, and our product pages and stuff. They've been around since the 70s and got popular in the 80s, maybe too popular. Then they came back as MIDI controllers when MIDI came out, and then as computer chips got more powerful, they put the sounds back into them, so these are now self-contained sounding units. So the first question, you know, is, is why? Why would I want one? I'm answering from my personal experience because I've used these pretty much since the mid 80s, and I own all of these and many, many more that we're not showing because we don't even sell them anymore. But these are all current models, and I do use them, and, and why? Well, the first part is, you know, we talk about the camera, you know, what, what makes a good camera. The good camera, your best camera, is always the one you have with you. So your best keyboard is the one you happen to have with you. And a key tower is very easy to bring along. They have little bags they fit into. And it just means if there's an opportunity to play keys with some group or some bunch of friends, it's like you have it. Otherwise, you might not have brought it if you had a large keyboard that you had to drag along. So that's number one. And if you're in a situation where you're going to some jam, at, at maybe a bar or something, you go to a friend's house where there's musicians, uh, they'll all be set up and there's nowhere for you to set up your stand and your large keyboard and get it all plugged in and everything. Uh, but if you have a keytar, it's pretty easy to just wire up and then just stand wherever it is that you fit within the band and you have flexibility to move around. Also, if you don't have a dedicated monitor, it allows you to move closer to the speaker so you can hear yourself. The next thing is visibility. And that is, if you ever watch a TV show like Saturday Night Live and there's a band and there's a keyboard player and maybe a guitar or two and bass and drums, watch how much time the camera spends on the keyboard player. It's usually very little, unless you know it's Elton John or something. Um, but even when the keyboard player takes a solo, you'll watch the camera pan to the keyboards and then immediately pan away. Maybe watch the guitar player tuning up or something. Uh, people just don't look at people playing keys because usually the angle doesn't show much of what they're doing anyway. Whereas when you're wearing a keytar, everybody can see what you're doing and hear apparently. It's just more captivating to be wearing one. And then the last reason, and this one, if you join a band that's doing covers, and let's say they've got uh, guitar, bass, drums, and then they'll say, oh, we need you to do the piano part. But then they'll say, oh, and can you also, there's this string part in that song. And they're like, oh, and then there's these horn riffs you gotta do here. And, and oh, by the way, there's a sound effect right in the middle of the song, can you get that too? And all of a sudden, you got stacks of keyboards all over the place just so you can do all this. And it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of thinking, and it's hard to enjoy yourself as a musician if you're trying to do the piano and strings and organ and sound effects and all the different things. And so a keytar kind of says, hey, I'm here to play a sound. What sound do you want me to play? Kind of in the same way a guitarist, you wouldn't go to him and say, hey, can you also do the string and brass and horn lines? And what it does is it helps pare down what the expectations are of what you're playing. It's like, hey, what part do you want me to play? That's what I'll play. And then the last thing of that is that sometimes if you have a band with two guitarists and bass and drums and a singer or two, they don't need someone to be playing bass parts on the piano and full 10 finger, full fisted chords. Sometimes they just want lead lines. Sometimes Sometimes they just want a string line to go over the top. And in that case, uh, one hand is plenty. What does the other hand do? Well, it usually is doing either pitch bending or vibrato or different things like this. This one has a very cool arpeggiation. And there's often controls at different places to allow you to adjust volume, sustain, unison mode, and all of these have different features like that. So what I'm going to do is just show you a little bit about each of these and then maybe cut to a clip or two of me playing some of them. So this one here is the Korg RK100S2. It's the second version of the RK100S. Uh, it's just slightly different patches, but both of those are copying a much earlier keyboard called the RK100, which was much larger. And this one just is smaller, lighter, and has a lot more features, so it's very cool.
The next is the Yamaha Sonogenic SHS500. Again, another battery powered one that you use with a strap. It has uh, wheels for pitch bend and mod, plus a lot of different buttons that let you transpose, change octaves, do playback of MP3 sounds. It also lets you do modes where you jam with software along with other songs. Some very nice sounds. I'm going to play some clips here for you. Here's one I use a lot. This is the Roland Axe Edge. It's a full-blown synthesizer with four parts that has the ability to split and layer. I do a lot of tricks with these. You can use the bar for modulation. You got a ribbon, you got buttons on the backs, you got knobs on the side. You can play back MP3s as well. Very, very powerful. Here's some clips from that. And then this next one, you might not think of as a keytar. These are the four Reface keyboards. There's the Reface CP that does electric pianos, clavs, things like that. There's the DX, which does FM synthesis, great for leads and basses and pads. There's the YC that does organ with real drawbars and it does the transistor types and the tone wheel types. And then there's the CS, which is kind of a basic modeling of the CS80. So very powerful synthesizers. But if you put the optional ends on these, you now have straps that you can wear like this, allowing you to have the piano and strings and synths and leads anywhere you want to go.
Another pair of normally horizontal keys that can be used as keytar are the Casio Tone CTS-1000V and the CTS-500. Like I said, these are normally played horizontally, but they have buttons for straps on them as well. And the last one I have here is the Alesis Vortex Wireless. And this is not a synthesizer, this is only a MIDI controller. So it has MIDI out as well as Bluetooth MIDI out. And so you can play a different synthesizer that you have off stage or underneath, or you can even connect it to a keyboard that you have on stage that you're playing, but then want to take a solo wearing a keytar. And it has the same things, it has the pitch wheels and ribbons and all the different buttons. But this one also has pads. So if you want to do hits or any kind of drum sounds, you can do that as well. And I should also say that all of these can do MIDI. So if you're not using particular sounds on the synth itself, but you have to use an external synthesizer, these can all be connected via MIDI or wireless MIDI if you get a wireless MIDI transmitter. If you have any further questions about any of these key tires, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. For more videos like this, click here or go to sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.